Welcome everyone. In this session, I'll talk about three items basically. How to set up a user, how to set up a connection, how to set up a group, and we'll show some other things that Guacamole is able to do in terms of sharing a screen for end user. Log admin. I'm going to log in real quick here. I'm going to log, well, if I can only remember my password. Uh, this should work. There we go. I've already set up a, I was testing it out. So I've already set up. So I have two machines here. I have a Windows 10 machine and Windows 11 lab machines. Uh, let's call them la lab machines. So you might have the same scenario on your, your end. I'm doing it for home lab, but uh, also this will be useful if you're setting up a lab for your students, if you're an institute or an organization with multiple machines, we'll want to do virtual machine setups, virtual labs for students. This is a really good tool, free to use. Yes, it does require some setup and some infrastructure in the back end, but really helpful. You don't need any RDG or RDS uh, licensing, nothing like that, no Windows licensing, uh, just purely uh, web based interface. So, uh, really useful tool. Hopefully you are able to set this up. Uh, I already have a video uploaded in terms of how to install and whatnot. So yeah, please have a look at it. So to set up, let's set up a connection first. So settings, I will be only talking about Windows RDP sessions or RDP connections. I'm not gonna go into SSH or anything else. So again, I am under settings, under connections top right or top you'll see connections and different things you can see at the top i'm going to create a, a group is good to keep things organized for example uh, let's say software xyz if you're in lab setting for example you have a mat lab or mat cat or something let's call it um, mat lab machines uh, so it's mat lab is a software that uh, you might have in your uh, so maximum in your organization, in your institute, or however you want to do it, right? So how, how, where, whatever situation you're in, number of connections, we're going to have um, 15 users, for example. Number of connections per user, we only going to have one connection per user allowed to the machine, right? Uh, number of connections, 15 users can connect. So I'm going to click save, you have 15 machines, for example. Uh, you can create another group called... Uh, for example, if you have, uh, what's another software? Uh, Adobe Pro, for example, not, well, you shouldn't really use, eh, that's a bad example. <laughs> uh, there's MATLAB, there's, um, uh, I guess there's a software called um, SPSS. It's a data analytics software. So um, you have 10 machines, so you can have 10 connections at the max, right? So again, one user per connection and I click save. Uh, type you can again. I'm not doing any balancing or anything. So if you have multiple guacamole servers, you can definitely do balancing, load balancing, or I shouldn't say load balancing. Is I haven't really looked into that, so don't quote me on that. That is for load balancing. So now we have two groups created, and you can create a new connection by clicking on new connection, or you can click on the new connection uh right here so so we have two we have matlab and we have spss let's call it spss machines save uh we can now create a connection so our matlab for example runs on windows 10 machine right so we have a windows 10 machine we're going to select the rdp you can set up kubernetes ssh telnet vnc if you have these enabled and installed um so it doesn't you want be able to use VNC if you didn't at the installation have the dependencies installed or ha had it installed. Uh, number of connections, it's Windows 10. You can, can't can have more than one anyways, right? So if it was Windows, for example, a server edition, you can have multiple connections with the same server. But since it's Windows 10, one connection per user. Uh, if you have a Guacamole proxy server, you can define that here. You can have a fully qualified domain name as well. For example, xyz.com or something like that, right? If we have defined that. But for me, it's PC1. 
3389 is the default RDP port. So make sure that uh, your machine at the end, other end, uh, is able to allow connections to RDP. And if you have a custom port, define the custom port here. And your firewall allows the connection. Otherwise, this will all work. So uh, define your username if you have one. But if it's a student, for example, they have their own accounts. You have a domain controller set up. They're authenticating against that. You can leave this blank and you can just define the domain. For example, ABC dot com is my domain name right for example you can define that here so and again i don't have a domain on my home lab so i'm going to just have a local account hashtag for example i'm not going to put the password in for windows 10 for windows 11 i'm going to automatically put the password i'm going to save the password so I'll kind of show you guys the difference in the two for security mode windows 10 it used to work with any but on version 1.4 I got stuck into uh, reconnect option or an error message, so NLA. So any does not work anymore for Windows machines. So you have to specify the NLA, network level authentication security mode. You have to ignore the server certificate if your machine does not have SSL or certificate. But if you're on a domain, you might have your machines, lab machines connected and then have proper certificates, then you will not ignore them. You'll not ignore the certificate. Uh, remote desktop gateway again, if you're in an organization, you have an RDG uh, setup that they need to connect through before they can get to the machine. You can define it here. For example, you're behind a firewall, but they have certain RDG setup that does the tunneling, sort of speaking to the internal network um, again initial i'm not sure what this really does i've tried it didn't work for me so it didn't launch the application that i was uh, hoping you can define the display size you're going to limit for example you want to give them 10 instead of 1080p you want to do something smaller something custom you can define the resolution here so uh, DPI, I usually leave it default uh, blank. Color depth, uh, if it, the, if you have bandwidth restrictions, uh, you can choose to do low color. So this way they have less lag when they're moving the stuff. It's a little quicker, but otherwise you can set to true color. I leave it to blank. Uh, resize method, uh, I use it to reconnect. So with this, uh, I will show you guys what resize uh, really does. Uh, in terms of what's the functionality it basically in full screen mode when you go full screen mode it automatically resizes the end users window so that's all it is uh what else are we going to do we're going to do clipboard so we can do windows so disable copying from remote we're not going to disable anything if you want to disable it you can do it here if you want to disable audio you can do it here i uh, don't do support audio in the console if you enable this, uh, even if you have audio, if you want to listen to audio, you will not. So make sure that's disabled. Uh, in terms of uh, printing, if you want to enable that, if you have a printer name, if you have something, you enable drives, what network drives, if you have any, you can define them. I'm going to disable the file upload. I don't want users to upload, or if you're in a lab situation, you want students to, to be uploading files to your lab. Uh, they can, of, of course, download files. Uh, you can also disable that as well if you want. Uh, performance, you can enable, so let's enable wallpaper, theming, font, uh, whatever connection, depending on your connection that you have, right, on your network. And this uh, is dependent on that. So the more things you enable, the lesser, um, uh, the, um, the more bandwidth you need, the more lag you might have. Remote app, I'll talk about in a separate session how to do that, but you can on a Windows 10, Windows 11 machine, even without uh, using remote desktop services or, or, or remote app server uh, on a server, uh, you can still kind of get around it using registry, registry edits and work. Uh, and it, it does work. I've tried it. I will show in a separate session how that really can be set up. Uh, SFTP, screen recording, a bunch of other things, wake on LAN, if you have one, do that. So. Uh, Windows 10, we are defining that. We are not going to, we can put them in the group or location right here. So let's put it under, oh, sorry. My batteries might be a little low on my wireless devices. That's why it's not 
kind of responding. So we said MATLAB, right? So Windows 10 will be in that location. So if we click on save, you'll see under MATLAB, uh, Windows 10. So that's how you do, uh, uh, that's how you'll define a connection. So I'm going to, uh, you can create uh, another connection uh, by simply clicking on the machine and then at the bottom you'll see clone click on the clone and then scroll the the buttons will disappear go back up and you say windows 11 for example and then we're going to put them in uh, what would we decide oh come on so this is a little laggy right now for some reason we're going to put it on spss for example and uh, we're going to define the ip or the host name this is pc2 and you click on save now the user is the same on both my lab machines that i have so now we have windows 11 windows 10 so we define connections uh, now let's define um you can do sharing profiles so let's define windows 10 read only so you choose read only i'm going to say read only I click on save for Windows 11, we're going to have two sh connection profiles, sharing profiles. One will be the interactive. So click on the new sharing profile, interactive, interactive, and we're going to not check read only. So click save. We're going to have read only as well. Oh, go back. So we're going to go back. New sharing profile. We're going to say read only. And then we're going to check this read only mode. Now we have Windows 11 with both interactive and read-only sharing profiles and Windows 10 with read-only. Now we define the machines, the groups. Uh, th this really helps in terms of connections or keeping your, your machines um, in an organized manner. Uh, the real connections that uh, you will give users is actually defined through groups. So just because uh, you have this doesn't mean that the user will have access to everything underneath the machine so i'll show you guys that uh let's create groups so under groups is where you'll define where what access a user should have what machines they should be connecting to and all that stuff as the name defines so uh we're gonna say this group we're gonna say okay matlab only for example right and uh, we're gonna you can disable the group restrictions uh, but i don't know why you would do that in what conditions um the users can't create do any of this user administration um they can have access to so this is what i was talking about if i click on matlab it doesn't select all the machines underneath it which is kind of strange but uh you have to define you have to select actually even the read only so anything that you want them connected to have access to you have to check these boxes and if you don't check the matlab machine for example this i didn't check um they won't see this so anything underneath uh, top level so top level must be checked as well if you on if you have multiple machines you have to have the top level enabled so they can see the machines underneath otherwise they will not see the machine underneath that top level uh, pro profile so we're going to have uh, one group for MATLAB use only. So we're going to give them access to MATLAB. We don't have any users created. So we're going to click on save. We're going to create another group called uh, SPSS only. And we're going to define our SPSS machine. And then you can, again, you have to select each individual one. Click on save. Uh, now we are going to define a group called all machine access all or actually i should say all software if you're in a lab situation for example right again i'd like to do this select all of the options it it, it can be a little tedious to be honest because you have to select it will be nice if they added the feature where you select this and then it selects all of them at once unless you can do shift select no it doesn't do or different no it doesn't control select i'm just trying different things but yeah it doesn't select okay all right so now this will be all software so no users are in it so create a group and that's how you'll create a group now we have three groups created let's create some users now to add them to different groups so we're going to create user one 
uh, we're going to create a user one, user one, user one. I'm going to say MATLAB only, right? So I just a name. Uh, that's the first name you can define uh, when they're allowed access. For example, they can only connect to the machine after, for example, 7 a.m. And then when they're not allowed and all that stuff, you can define that here. When is their account enabled after? What date? What what date, for example, they should not have access afterwards? You can define all that stuff. They're not admins. They can change their own passwords. They can't create uh, sharing profiles. And uh, to give them access to the machines, the software machines. Uh, so you just basically choose the groups. You don't have to worry about now at this stage. If you don't have the groups, you'll have to individually give them access to machines that they should have access to. But that's why groups are really handy. So we're going to say this user has only access to, for example, he said MATLAB, right? User one has access to MATLAB only. And that's Windows 10 machine. So we're going to click save. We're going to create another user by clicking new user, or you can just click on user one and then same thing, bottom, clone. You go back to the top, you say user two. This is going to have SPSS only access. Uh, yeah, we're not going to change any of that. We're going to remove the group from MATLAB to, we're going to change it to SPSS. And that's it, user two. Oh, we need to give the password. <laughs> Two user two uh, save. Now we're going to create a third user called user three. User three, user three, and we're going to give them access to all the softwares. So click on save. And now I should probably give it all software, for example. I just for this is for me you definitely don't have full name as all software right so nobody has that name uh connections uh we have defined connections you have defined groups you have defined users uh you can look at history in terms of connections and who is actually connected right now or if you logged in as an admin you can see who's connected you can disconnect them choose and disconnect them uh so let's say uh, jump right into the user interface or user interaction so we have users groups Actually, fine. One thing I want to uh, talk about is that the fact that if you have only one machine defined to for a user, for example, user one and user two, they will automatically be prompted to log into that machine. But if you had two machines here, for example, right, they'll be able to choose. Uh, so let me show you. Uh, so for SPSS, let's add another machine. Let's add a dummy machine, for example. So we're going to clone it. And we're going to call it Windows 11 Dummy Machine. And we're going to give it, uh, well, let's give it that. Yeah, there you go. But we're not going to uh, connect to it anyway. So we're going to click Save. So user two has access to these two machines, but user one has MATLAB access. So here's what it will look like. So log out. We're going to log in as user number one. It should, this user should have only access to Windows 10. That's all they do. So they will automatically get, get connected to the machine that they have access to. I uh, remember I didn't log in, I, I wasn't in full screen. So if you, you real state the screen this size, is a little small for your liking. You can go under your browser, choose full screen and it should toggle automatically to the full screen mode. So really nice. Firefox is a little, little, little strange because when you do this, when you scroll, go to the top, it kind of does a weird look and feel. So Google Chrome, it works well. It doesn't kind of give you a grief. So again, um, this is what the display resize. I remember I showed you guys what the resize. That's exact. This is exactly what it does to resize. Uh, so we now connect to Windows 10. Uh, to, uh, to share the profile, to share the connection with another user, what you need to do is Control Alt Shift. And you open this uh, guacamole menu, hidden menu, and then you can do share. You can say read only, it'll create a link for it. And you can copy that and then share it to the 
faculty to your colleagues and they will be able to connect. even if they don't have an account they should be able to so we're not logged in and i'm able to connect in to the session and it says anonymous user has joined in for the end user so on the left side is the actual user and on the right side is our edge browser that we connected in and it's only a read only mode so i can't actually do anything control alt shift will take care of that menu so whatever i'm doing here on the left on my google chrome you can see it's happening on the end user that connected so you can see somebody's connected you can't really kick somebody off uh this your session so once they're connected they're connected unless they log off so just a heads up on that to connect that to disconnect them basically you have to sign out of your session so not reboot i'm going to disconnect sign out so my session is closed and i can log out or i can connect in because this is user one remember user one only had access to one machine so i'm going to close that i'm going to maximize it we can now connect to user two they had access to windows 11 and then the dummy account or the, the dummy system that we created so user two yeah maybe we didn't give them access looks like it that's why so this should have windows 11 so there you go oh, okay windows decided to choose that picture the background so this is windows 11 and they're not connected to it's the same thing this user had both uh, control shift, uh, control all shift. So this user had interactive and read only interactive, like the name suggests. And you do this, you give them the link, the end user they will now be able to control your session. So let's do copy and paste. There you go, anonymous user has connected and then I can control this user's connection through my uh, uh, edge browser so like that so when i say control there you go i'm using my edge browser to control the end user session uh you might you know something uh, now that it changed the resolution on here i got an interactive session right so the resolution for the original user who shared the connection is also changing so it can get a little um i don't know the end user might not like it so um, yeah depending on the, that's why you need to define a specific resolution so it's a fixed resolution if you're doing an interactive session but but there you go so on the right side is the edge the user that connected as anonymous it, how do i know because i don't have the window at the top right that says who's connected so uh, so somebody's connected again you can disconnect them all you can do is basically disconnect them is to sign out so uh not sign out. where is my sign out oh here it is sign out and then that will kick them off the session so let's log in with the user number three they have access to all the machines and this is what they will see so windows 10 windows 11 so they have access to the matlab and they have the access to windows uh 10. so that's so if a user has multiple machine access this is the interface they will see i just want to show you guys this as well so you guys can see the difference and if you define a connection that has a password saved they will automatically connect to it when they connect on the machine so that's how that's all that i had to show you guys in this session we set up a user we set up the group we set up connections and showed you guys um, multiple user well let me show you guys multiple users connecting in uh, if the other user has an account and they're logged in um, they can basically um, on the top right you'll see their name so let's do this let's connect in wow 10 dot well, the key doesn't exist so i'm gonna log in as user number two actually user number one they only have access to windows 10 right so 
to cancel that and I'm going to put that window over here on the side oh, there you go all right so windows 11 is on my left and this is the user number one that we just connected since he doesn't have any or they don't have any access to multiple machines that's why you're seeing that screen uh we're gonna now share the session it's control alt shift share we're gonna do read only session we're gonna copy the link we're gonna give it to the user they're gonna paste it in their browser they should not be required to enter the password uh come on save refresh it's not okay well that's why you need to have a user with uh, multiple machines uh, because I can't do the demo for you. Looks like it. Let's see if this will work. I hope it works. Otherwise, I'll have to create a session, uh, create a user with multiple sessions. There we go. So that worked, and it said user three, I think. Uh, what did it say? No, it's still anonymous. So let me do this real quick uh go back i'm gonna sign out log in log admin gc admin settings users i'm gonna give user one access to the spss as well save sign out and on the right we're gonna reconnect or log out let's log in as oh shoot today yes user one yes user one there you go they have access i'm gonna come on windows all right okay so on the right we have user one logged in and on the left we'll do user three again user three and connect to my windows 11 machine with my password I am connected. All right, going to share the session with the user. Control Alt Shift. I'm going to do read only session. Copy the link. Copy it over to here. And hit refresh. There you go. It says shared by user number three. So on the left, I'm going to remove that. So I'm now on my edge. Click on this and you see it says user number one. So if the user is logged in, if they're part of your uh, user groups, uh, users that have access to your Gronkamoli server, uh, you will see their name or I should say their ID, not per se the name because I don't think the name was set to user one. But that's how you, you guys share uh, you can share your sessions with multiple users. You can actually have even more. Um, how would I do that? Let's try to open this without incognit, incognit, uh, in private mode. And then copy and paste and go. There you go. So now I have two users connected to my session. Uh, one is the anonymous and then one is the user. So that's how you can have multiple users connected in. So that's all the guys that I want to show you guys in this session. Other sessions, I'll talk more about uh, setting up uh, or doing some SQL uh, modification on the fly to define dynamic connections and whatnot. A little bit, a little bit more uh, kind of uh, in tune with uh, the lab setups that you might have. For example, a lab machine is not on at the time. And then every time you turn on a lab machine, it gets a different IP address because you don't have a reserved IP for that machine. Scenarios like that, you can define the connections in your guacamole server and uh, basically um, update the guacamole database on the back end using uh, scripts on the VM itself, right? So uh, I'll show you guys uh, what I mean uh, when I do the next session. But that's how you will set up users, groups, and connections. Again, if a user only has access to one machine, they will automatically get connected to that machine. So 
uh, if they are multiple machine access uh, they will have that nice look and feel basically uh, it's like this for example right so they'll have a nice look and feel different machines they can connect to so if you like the this video guys please hit the like button i appreciate uh, you guys commenting as well if you're going to be using it somewhere on your home lab or on your organization to set up labs please do comment below i'd like to hear about all the different scenarios you might be setting this up as and using it and deploying it again uh, for my needs this is great it works for me uh, depending on i haven't really done any load testing or how well it behaves under load so you can't really comment on that but for my needs it's going to work so thanks guys if you like this please hit the like button um, do subscribe and do comment below you know, and how you plan to use this uh, in your own environment uh, how you can deploy it so i'd like to hear about it Stay safe, guys. Take care.